Hey YouTube, AZ Bill here once again. Um, my last video was probably a couple, two or three weeks ago, and I think in that video I, um, I made some kind of pledge or something that I was going to actually make. <clears throat> something that was going to replace some way of actually uh, taking my remote feeders, my remote alcohol feeder, and elevating it uh, other than just, you know, putting blocks of wood underneath it or trying to, you know, put something you know, just to lift it up a little bit higher so you can actually elevate it to where you're actually feeding your stoves out. A lot of my stoves, like I said before, have different um, places where I put the micro nipple and everything else, so that makes it difficult sometimes to elevate it to a point where, you know, it's uh, it's feeding correctly. So what I've done is, from you can see from the pictures and uh, the drawings that I've done on this particular one, uh, this is the one that I've made and it's got pads on the bottom bolted to the pads in the center here sandwiched in between here and two pieces of plastic uh, these are actually electrical covers that I think I showed in the last video also and uh, it does fit um, when you don't when you're using it in just this configuration here where you have those two sandwich ones on the top there um, tinnies which is an older one of tinnies fits in nicely it's you know it's not snug or anything else all of mine fit in there quite nicely. Um, what I didn't show, I think, on the last video when I was talking about my um, stove that I made with the magnet on there, I think I didn't show that this actually this comes off um, off of the this is the only metal thing on here is actually the top to a I believe that was something like a um, pizza sauce can that I cut down somewhat. And I didn't show that this comes on and off pretty easily, so you can actually transport it by itself. Um, I've actually changed the pot stand around a little bit too. Um, I think it's a little bit nicer, a little steadier than I had before there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set this up and uh, run it and uh, I'm not doing a boil test. Um, it's right now it's, it's almost 103 degrees out here in the garage so it's a little bit warm. Boil test wouldn't mean anything. But you will see how the, uh, the remote feeder works, how it bubbles up. Uh, I think on the configuration where we have this one on top is exactly the right height for this nipple on the feeder to be just slightly higher than it is on the stove itself. So I'll be back in just a minute when I have this set up and we'll be lit up and going. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. Uh, the fire's going. I've got the pot on. Again, I'm not doing a boil test here. This is just to see how well this works as far as the setup, the height. And um, so far, I don't know, I, I'm, it's difficult to see the bubbling coming up out of here, but if you listen to it, we're getting a bubble about every one and a half to two seconds come up so I think I'm pretty much at the right height and even if I was a little bit um, high and I was feeding it too much I could I could regulate it with my little pinch valve here so um, I think this is working pretty good I I lined these up earlier today and I saw that the nipple on the 
uh, feeder was just slightly above the nipple on the um, on the stove itself. So I think that's working out pretty good. And again, I can vary this. I think I showed a lot of different variations in which you can have the height vary depending on um, how where your nipple is on your stoves. You can have it almost all the way down to the ground here, almost about a quarter inch off the off the uh, uh, ground level or off the uh, table level. Now the re reason for this again was you know I was tired of trying to have to find something all the time that was supposed to elevate it enough so I could actually feed enough alcohol in. Um, if you really, I have some of my stoves here, and I'm going to show you one here just pre presently um, that really needs you to feed quite a bit of alcohol in at one time. Those are the bigger ones, not these smaller stoves like we're running here. And uh, to do that, you have to have it elevated somewhat higher uh, than I'm having this elevated. So consequently, um, you know, I'm always fiddling around trying to find something to elevate it. So I thought this would work out pretty good, and it has so far. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just take a little pause here and I'll come back. Um, I don't know much else to say about this. Um, let me just say this, the weight on this is probably less than that stove combination pot stand over there. So if somebody's going to say, well, that, that thing's awfully heavy, why would you take... Well, it's not really meant to be something you're going to be a, a ultralight backpacker with. It's something for, uh, you know, uh, car camping. Uh, just camping in general, home use, those kind of things. That's the only reason I was going to use it and uh, have something that I didn't have to uh, always go looking for something to elevate my, my feeder here. So um, that's that's the reason why I built it. And it's kind of cute. It was fun to build. Uh, the pins come off. They they just screw into the bottom plate on there. Uh, they, they come off fairly easily. Um, you can store them and take them with you. Like I said, the whole thing uh, comes apart so you can take it with you. Uh, if you're camping or something. So, okay, what I want to do is I'm going to come back here in a couple of minutes and uh, I'm going to shut this down. I don't want to use a whole lot of, you know, fuel on this just to heat up water when it's 105 degrees or so out here in the garage and it's damn hot. So, uh, I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to come back and show you a little bit about my next project. One I think I mentioned in the last video. So, I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I think also in my last video I mentioned that I was contemplating a, actually it was a, a dual stove and that's what I'm going to be working on next. And this will be primarily used for emergency use, home use, um, you know, if you're in a survivalist kind of situation where uh, you need to cook quite a bit and uh, most of what I've seen here in the past are people who are making just single stoves. So, I'm going to actually take it. This is a. This is my. I think this is my big daddy. Uh, something that I made that we were working on. Oh, several months ago, where we were actually taking uh, large amounts of water and heating it up for spaghetti and uh, possibly using it for uh, making you know cakes and muffins and in, in, in larger quantities. And you needed a higher uh, volume of heat, so these these kind of stoves were kind of like in vogue. And I think some people are still looking to make them. This is what I call my big daddy. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to actually take the uh, pot stand part of it off. And this is just a scrap piece that I have right now. This is not the actual width or anything else. It's just a scrap piece of aluminum. And I'm actually going to mount I'm going to mount uh, the frame here, not, not the pot stand part. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to mount this one. And I've got another... Um, I got another water bottle back here that I can use. I'm going to make a duplicate of this one here and I'm going to attach it. I've already got kind of an idea how to attach it here and then I'm going to have the pot stand actually integrated into this into this bar and there'll be one on this side and then one over here on this side. They'll be about 11 and a half to 12 inches apart and you'll be able to use this with um, almost conventional pots and pans and that's that's really what I'm looking to do. And uh, looking at Hiram Cook here just recently, a couple of his videos, I found a, this is a can, we hit some, um, uh, we hit Rubens the other night, so this is actually from a sauerkraut can. And it actually fits, and let me push this back a little bit here, it actually fits on the bottom of this one here, so I know it's going to fit when I take the, it fits pretty snugly. So I know it's going to fit, and I'm going to cut it up and use it and make a hole in here and a hole in here, and uh, use it as like a, a simmer ring. 
and when I get these together I'll be able to use it as simmering. You wouldn't have to have this thing go on full blast either on both of them. So it's going to be one here, one about 11 and a half, 12 inches apart. There'll be legs on made for this and the reason why this is so good, this we talked about this stand here for our, our remote feed. It'll be fed, fed by one bottle with a T uh, going off for both, both lines and then also I'll have a uh, little pinch valve for both lines. You can turn this over and raise it up high enough because I think when I raise this all up it's going to be elevated somewhat, maybe you know something like in this this realm somewhere that just to get it off the ground. So that's my next project I'm going to be playing around with. Um, it looks like kind of fun, uh, you know, I have to do some, you know, ideas on my cat again, put that together. I don't know if anybody finds that interesting. Uh, I like doing it because now I've got a record of actually how I made these. Now I may have to take and take these off and thread these ends a little bit because I do have space, threaded spacers I can use if I have to go up even a little bit higher with this and I'll just thread those ends. Um, I could make new ones if I needed to, but um, I think that's probably would be a fix on that and I could actually vary the height again by using uh, threaded spacers on the end. So that's my next project. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, um, thanks for watching and stay tuned because hopefully I'll get this one done pretty quickly. Uh, you never know because it's so hot out here right now. You can't go camping right now in, pretty much in Arizona unless you go all the way up to the canyon where it's a little bit cooler up there. But anywhere here in Arizona right now is going to be 90 plus degrees even if you go up into the Sedona area and uh, so it's a little bit difficult to do some camping in this time of year so anyway thanks for watching uh, thanks to all my subscribers and uh, we'll be seeing you a little bit later thanks